Dave Szymanski opposed Ron Kaczynski's proposed solution of filtering air in the freeway, saying that the filters do not filter out hazardous gases. But what's it going to cost? Barbara Messina urges that this project be built as quickly as possible due to rising prices, while Mary M. Parada and David Szymanski believe money can be spent elsewhere. The cost to complete the freeway in 1964 was $6 million. Okay, it was a million dollars a mile. The cost today um, is like $3 billion. Then they say that in 2030 it's going to be $5.5 billion. Okay? But if you read their report very carefully, that says for construction only. It doesn't include design, engineering, it doesn't include land acquisition. It's going to be a toll road, so they have to collect tolls. It doesn't include $30 million a year that they have to maintain it. Now for $30 million, just one year, you can build a lot of rail. I think most of us uh, who are opposed to the freeway would like to see more money put into uh, mass transit and other means of uh, transportation, encourage people to take the gold line, encourage people to take the bus. Here we have Ron Kaczynski to express his concerns of the freeway's impacts on the community, and Mike Ten shows us the proposed route through South Pasadena, displaying the destruction that will occur if an overpass was to be built. Whenever you're proposing to take that many houses out of any neighborhood, especially well-established neighborhoods and people who like their community, uh, the impacts on the community are, are significant and they're substantial. Here's a, this is our library. This is our school. Di this is one of this is our school district office. This these are one of the reasons why why we we fight the freeway because one this is our central library. This is where our library is. This is where our school district office is. Our our senior center is right here. So the freeway would completely devastate all of our cherished buildings and organizations. And the freeway would literally wipe all of this out. This is our football field, which is right here. And the high school's over there. So we, we would be carving out this whole area between here and this hill to put this trough of a freeway through. It would take out all the homes. Would the school be preserved? Uh, the football field would be lost, but they said, well, they, for the football field, they would, uh, for the football field, they would uh, put it over the, f the freeway. They would cover the section that you could put the freeway down. Uh -huh. yeah, but we, we, we said that, that we, we don't want that either. So. And how will this affect the housing market? Melcine Brown, a local real estate agent, believes nothing will happen due to South Pasadena's high educational standards. I don't think that we will see a dramatic change in the housing market in South Pass, regardless of what happens to the freeway. South Pass is a great school district, and as long as that is maintained, the housing market will also keep strong. In a regional perspective, Eric Shen, Pasadena Transportation Planning and Development Manager, believes that by filling in the 710 gap, it will satisfy mobility needs as well as move imported goods efficiently throughout the region. Well, if you look at from the county's perspective, uh, the gap, that's what we call a 710 gap, is a critical missing link uh, for, uh, to accommodate the region's transportation mobility needs, particularly uh, we do have a lot of, a lot of uh, heavy tra traffic coming out of Port of Los Angeles. Um, Forty percent of our cargoes coming from, e from Far East come through California. And many of them uh, come through two ports in the Los Angeles area, Port of LA and Port of Long Beach. And which route do they take first? 710. So the missing link not only has uh, a, a, a critical importance in terms of goods movement, but it also provides a, a very important option for our day-to-day -day commuters and that's why from the from the region's perspective at 710 if the gap is closed the, the benefit is to reduce travel time reduce congestion which translate to reduce air quality pollution uh, through reduced fuel consumption from Pasadena's uh, 
official position through policy, uh, we are, we stay consistent with the regional plan, which is to close the gap um, that will have benefit in reducing traffic through Pasadena as well. This 710 project we're talking about here has the um, highest payoff in terms of air quality improvement in the region. And uh, when they did a look, when they looked at all the types of different types of transportation projects that we can that we can build in Southern California, this uh, one takes and takes cars off local streets, takes cars and trucks that are taking circuitous routes, longer routes. Uh, takes cars that are in stop and go traffic and puts them on this freeway and the air quality benefits are tremendous. Uh, that's why uh, this project, despite all of the opposition, uh, still remains a, a goal of the, um, the transportation agencies. So here's the 110, but the 710 would be four times as big. Okay, so that what would that do? It would cut us in quarters. Here, 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 and here. And the town is only 3.4 miles big. So we decided that we couldn't live. We could no longer exist as a city. So we decided that we had to fight this. 40 years ago, Caltrans proposed the 710 to be built, passing through the city of South Pasadena. However, numerous court cases between South Pasadena and Caltrans state that more information and research was needed in order for this project to be built. More and more research was completed until today, and South Pasadena still prevents such a project to be built. In the last 40 years, MTA has built the Gold Line through Pasadena, as well as other public transportation methods to ease congestion off many freeways. But with the recent economic growth, many products are now imported through LA's major ports. And so if the gap in the 710 were to be fulfilled, trucks would no longer take alternative routes or travel on local streets to their destinations. Funding such a project would be expensive, and the longer we wait, the higher the cost. However, the inclusion of such a freeway would devastate South Pasadena's community, potentially dividing the city. The ever-growing problem of transportation continues each day. The question is, should a community be sacrificed for the sake of accessibility? Or should an entire region be sacrificed for the concerns of potentially dividing one city? You decide.